Hello world, Justin Tucker here, and in this video we're going to uh, have a tutorial over a very powerful editing tool in the WordPress community uh, called Beaver Builder. And there uh, are some related tools to Beaver Builder, namely a theme, the Beaver theme, and there is the Beaver themer, which is a different plugin other than just the Beaver Builder. So if we kind of go look at plugins here, we can take a look at what these need to look like. Uh, this is the Beaver Builder plugin pro version. This is a paid plugin I highly recommend. Absolutely. Um, here is the Beaver Themer, which basically gives us control over headers, footers, and other sections. That's not just plain content, which is what the Beaver Builder plugin exceeds at. Then we also have the beaver theme, excuse me, yes, which would be an appearance, of course. And the beaver theme actually comes with a child theme and a master theme. You, of course, want to make your child theme the one that you activate. So these are kind of the tools that I'm using for this tutorial. Of course, Beaver Builder doesn't really need um, the beaver theme in order to work. Beaver Builder seems to work on a lot of templates. But we're just going to add a new uh, test page here and kind of show you some of the amazing drag and drop features that the Beaver Builder plugin offers. I'm going to go ahead and give it a title and click Page Builder, which gets activated when you uh, use Beaver Builder. And it basically creates a blank template like this. So up here at the top, it's important to notice this is basically your master administration bar for Beaver Builder. And this right here opens up what are called modules, rows, templates, and saved items. Modules are essentially items that you can drag and drop into your page. I would say 90% of the time people will be using header, photo, and text editor because I think those are the elements that are mainly on a page. Otherwise, you can bring in videos, buttons, separators, audio, all sorts of neat stuff. Maps, pricing tables, accordion, all this uh, functionality in JavaScript is loaded in each one of these, and they're responsive. That is uh, a huge consideration and a huge plus. Inside here, I have got... Actually, no, I don't. The Beaver Builder Ultimate Add-ons, I don't think I have in here. That is another really neat and powerful module from, or that uh, works with Beaver Builder, that is a one-time cost and it brings in uh, a bunch of new extra features in the forms of modules that do some of the same stuff and others are kind of unique and do their own creative thing. Uh, Beaver Builder also gives you access to a bunch of really neat templates. And if you're just starting out, if you're uh, trying to get a web page going, this is a really awesome way to throw something up on a canvas and uh, start to create with it. So here is all of a sudden my templated page thrown up there. And here's kind of the power of this plugin. So you'll notice whenever I mouse over a section, if it's editable and I can make changes to it, you'll see this blue box that highlights around it. And pretty much everything on here, you can change like that. So if we go up here, it's important to understand that you have two things going on in sections such as this. You have a row, which is the entire area, and you have modules inside of it. And so where the rows come from are from the rows tab. And you can bring in one, two, three, four, five, six sidebar configurations or both. And this is really powerful stuff. So what I just did there, let me uh, back up. How you make this work, and this can be tricky sometimes, you have to click the item and hold down on your mouse. Do not let go. If you let go, this happens nothing and a lot of people will click on it and un not understand why it didn't show up well you have to click on it and hold it and then when you hold it and drag it around you'll see kind of a pulsing blue area 
where it's letting you know it's going to go. And then when you let go of the mouse, it adds it there. And so this was me just adding in three new columns. And now um, it would be time to place things in those columns. So let's say I wanted a photo in here. Each module box will have its own configuration options. So obviously a photo will ask for things specific to a photo, like what photo would you like to put in there? Every module, however, will also have an advanced tab. And this is very important on how you can fine tune the adjustments of perhaps where this element needs to go. And you'll find that on each module. So here is a text editor. Whoops. Um, you can place uh, h2 tags in here along with other tags. These sections uh, obviously can be expanded or full screened if you'd like to really work in a larger editing area. So you can do h2 tags and just have a normal uh, what you see what you get editor which is the text ed editor module. You also have the option of header which you can be more focused with. And the header you'll see has different tabs. So this has a general tab and a style tab, but all of them will have an advanced tab. Uh, the advanced tab not only offers the margins, but it offers really cool responsive layout uh, directives as well. Do we always want this to show just on large devices, large and medium only, medium only, medium and small only, or small only? Uh, this is a really powerful way to turn things on and off based on uh, screen width and uh, responsive layouts. Uh, vis visibility, this is a little bit of a permission access control field. I don't really find myself using it a lot. You've got some JavaScript animations you can apply and you can add an HTML, HTML uh, element in the uh, form of an ID or class for CSS. And you can pretty much do this uh, on this advanced tab on any module. Kind of the same options. Global, global options on every module, even though each module will ask for something different. So this here is actually a call out. And you'll notice it gives you, you know, the same idea, um, a form-based interface to fill out. You have style options, image options. You can replace the icon. You have a whole icon library. And it really is that simple. If you want to link it to somewhere. So these are the modules inside of rows. Now, uh, the gearbox, of course, uh, gets you into the edit mode. The same thing with rows, but rows are a little different in that they're the container that modules go in. And so you can tell a container to be full width and the content within to be full width. As you can see, it changed. Or you can say fixed width, which is usually what uh, I see happen. On the height, you can choose default or full height, which uh, is usually used with a background image. And I can demonstrate that here in a moment. Uh, this is where we can say, let's make all the text in this area white. And for the background, let's say, let's use a photo of some bricks. And let's say I want the text to kind of jump out at us a little bit more, so I'm going to put an overlay. 50% looks fine. I'm going to go ahead and save this, and you'll see the effects and how quick that was. And so now we have a brick background because the background was added to the row. And then the modules inside are the same and kind of obey the white text and stuff in the row settings. So where these fields here come into play, 
um, whatever class you put. There's a really cool area in the top left of Beaver Builder up here that you can do some global things. And so this, I believe, is actually to put CSS and JavaScript in this page. So this is one place to put CSS. Another place to put CSS is in the global settings. So if you know you've got something like this, the P tag, we're going to make the font size 17 pixels. We could also add the test class. And just to demonstrate that I have control of it, I'm going to say display none. And there it goes, disappears. I don't know if I can override the background. No. So obviously, uh, this is a great place to put classes globally and JavaScript. And here's also a general setting, which I'll go over. And then these classes and whatever directives they do, of course, can be applied to any module. And in these fields, make sure you take out the hash and the period. Those don't go in here. And then finally, in the global settings. So one thing you don't want to find yourself doing is, let's say we don't like the alignment of this, and we're finding ourselves going into the Advanced tab, into every single module, and changing values that are the same values we're changing. All right. So if you find yourself doing what I'm doing right here, that is usually a symptom of a better way existing. One way you get there is to use the global settings and you get these default margins and paddings. Now, these don't necessarily control uh, top versus bottom versus left or right. These control top, bottom, left and right. OK, but you can at least set these and then come in here and through CSS, adjust those globally so that when you place a new module of any kind, that it's default spacing. And these values here will be what you need once you place it. And you don't have to go in and change the value of each and every each and every box. So um, that really is kind of the basics of this tutorial. Uh, Beaver Builder is a drag and drop dream. If I want something to move over here, I drag it over here. If I want this area to go away, I can make it go away. This is a accordion module and this is very neat. This is where you can place, uh, this is really popular with uh, Q and A's. And you can see how easy it is to add to the box here. And when you click on these pluses, they'll actually open up when you're done saving. Okay. And so we're still in edit mode. You know, every every row again has its own settings of full width. You know, uh, we, we can do a parallax background just as easy. Very cool stuff. Oh, I bet you that picture is ah, because this is a slider. Let me get rid of this. And let me tell the height to be full height just to make it big. And you can see there's kind of the parallax effect. But of course, you can also use uh, video, background video, really cool stuff, slideshows, just a solid color, none, photo. And once you're done with all these things, you go up to the top left where it says done, and you can choose to discard, save, draft, or publish. So I'm going to go ahead and click publish here. And you'll notice here is my page, rather ridiculous, but illustrates the effect. Here is the accordion feature. Here is the question that I added. Answers are awesome. 
And that is really the power of Beaver Builder. Now again, all this video has covered is the Beaver Builder plugin, which hijacks and controls the main content area of your WordPress material. That does not control the footer, okay? That will be in another video I'll do on the Beaver Themer module, or I'm sorry, plugin. I uh, come from a Drupal background, and uh, in Drupal they call them modules, and in WordPress they call them plugins. But the Beaver Themer is what we'll go over next, and that gives you options on controlling the header, the footer, and other areas that aren't just raw content areas inside of the page. So anyway, well, I appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions or comments, please reach out, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.